pumping that is vintage ramones right there look at them johnny joey dd look how beautiful they are marky ramone on the drums the original drummer marky ramone so yeah 1975 1975 the boys are out there from rockaway beach new york rockaway rock rock rockaway beach look at them man they're they're they're, they're legends they're legends they're playing at a uh, this is actually a, a, a recording i found it's a it's a practice. It's a practice session, like a warm up before the gig, at a place called Otoro's uh, Otoro, Loft in New York City. 1975, man. It doesn't get better than that, man. That's when the Ramones. <laughs> they had a short life, man. They peaked. They peaked, man. The fucking Ramones. They peaked out, man. Right. So, Marcus Conte reporting and talk about the news, man. Fucking news, man. It's fucking boring, man. This is everything's boring, man. God damn it, this this. Uh, this impeachment shit, man. It's so fucking boring. Right? It's just putting everybody to sleep, man. Nobody cares. Like, they look at the Democrats on the, watching the debates. Nobody cares. It's just fucking boring, man. It's so goddamn boring. We'll talk about some exciting stuff today, though. I got a, a good, an interesting story. A racist chancellor, the racist chancellor from Syracuse University. Syracuse University, I was, that's my alumni, right? I'm, you know, uniquely uh, positioned to talk about this particular uh, chancellor, this particular situation in Syracuse, New York. So what happened was a uh, apparently a there was a race, some kind of racial tension on campus, and it turns out to be not what you think. Uh, it turns out to be a hoax. I'm going to show you the hoax, man. The fucking, well, actually, not not so much a hoax, but how the chancellor is a snowflake who took the bait. Right? Also, look at um, a, a bank. 23 million, an Australian bank violates money laundering laws, laws 23 million times. No penalty, no crime, no crime. Nobody goes to jail, nothing, right? So we'll look at that. And Obama is uh, Obama. You remember that guy, Obama, the first black president? He's, he's sandbagging the Democratic Party, telling him to chill out. Yo, 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 chill out. He's telling that to the, uh, to the donor class, chill out. So we'll look at what he's talking about. So uh, let's look at let's look at Syracuse University first. So here we are. Four Syracuse University students suspended after racist anti-Semitic incident. Ooh, sounds heavy, right? It sounds pretty heavy, man. So four students at Syracuse University have been suspended in connection with a string of racist and anti-Semitic incidences. School officials said. Sounds pretty heavy, man. So, Chancellor Ken Sravada Dudu announced the interim suspensions Wednesday, three days after Syracuse administrative administrators canceled all social activities at fraternities for the rest of the semester. What? Cancel the cancel the fucking fraternities? How are you gonna get drunk? How are you gonna how are you gonna get laid if you close the fraternity row, man? Come on, that's why people go to Syracuse. It was ranked the uh, number one party school in America this year, right? You closed fraternity row, nobody's gonna go to your school anymore. You fucking idiots! Right? You gotta get that's why I got well my pussy right in the fucking in the fraternities, man. In response to a black, this is all in response to a black student who said she was verbally assaulted on campus. Late Saturday, she said, four of the 14 people involved in the incident were Syracuse University students. Nine of them are, are enrolled at 
other universities where officials have been informed. The student who was reported to be the most aggressive was from Rutgers University. Uh, in all, there were there have been 12 reported incidents of incidences of racist and anti-Semitic graffiti found on nearby universities campus on the found on or nearby that's fucked up nearby what do you mean down the block across the street uh in the in the neighborhood next door right graffiti is 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 foul in my view you don't fucking spray paint your crap on someone else's wall or on their car or on their fucking anywhere right uh, you know, so that's destruction of property. I don't, I don't like that. But what exactly was printed? What anti-Semitic graffiti? And uh, where off campus? Was it on campus? Was it off campus? They don't say. It's just graffiti. It's anti-Semitic. Okay. Investigators believe up to five members of the university's community are responsible for the hate speech, said the chancellor. Hate speech. I thought the I thought there was no hate speech. I thought there was no such thing as hate speech. There's only speech. Hate speech is in the in the ears and the mind of the people receiving it, right? Right? The unstable, the the you know, the uh, the the snowflake, the hypersensitive, right? So separate separately Sravada la la la, the Chancellor said uh, reports that some Syracuse students had received a white supremacist manifesto via airdrop. Really? I- including the, the sender was nearby, indicating that the sender was nearby. So the theory is that somebody was walking around airdropping a manifesto. Um, right? To date, quote, this is funny, to quote, to, to date, quote, Law enforcement has not been able to locate a single individual who directly received an airdrop. Really? So the whole thing is a scam. Not one. Uh, It was apparent that this rumor was probably a hoax, but that that reality was not communicated clearly and rapidly enough to get ahead of escalating anxiety. God damn it, man. So so they're they're reacting to a hoax. We're going to look at, um, we'll look at um, the chancellor in his own words, and, and it's going to reveal to you. I don't want to go too far on this, this story, but you're going to see the chancellor. You're going to see the state of mind revealed, the, the, the psychology of the campus leadership in this particular school and schools all over the, all over the country. All right, I'm going to show it to you. Right? So university's um, uh, newspaper, the Daily Orange, uh, I used to, I, I took pictures for the Daily Orange. I used to walk around campus snapping pictures of hot chicks. Uh, only, only hot women. I would take pictures of it and then I'd go to the, the fucking, you know, because that's what, that's what I did. Right? That's what I did in school, man. I took pictures of hot chicks and then I sent it to the uh, Daily Orange. Uh, I'd go in there. So I was a, I was a uh, photographer for the newspaper. I know the paper. Right? So the, it, reportedly that the manifesto uh, was 74 pages of the suspect from New Zealand shooting, the mosque shooter guy. Right? It turns out to be a total farce, right? They're spreading a farce. The uh, chancellor spread a farce around, right? And uh, so here he is. Let's listen to him in his own words and watch the snowflake crumble. And you'll see how the guy overreacted and why, right? Because... Really, it's just, you know, what is it? It's one, it's one person crying racism again. We are at a time in this nation when we risk it becoming an acceptable leadership style to ignore facts, to insult and attack those with whom we disagree, to refuse ever to admit error, and most of all, to evade responsibility. That's not who I am or how I was raised. I have heard from and listen to many, many students and their families, not just in the past 10 days or 13 days, but also before. I've heard from our faculty. He's going to cry. And staff. They are in pain because they are afraid of being targeted because of race or religion. They have asked me whether I can ever understand how miserable and unacceptable that is. I do understand it. I spent six years of my life publicly fighting to permit affirmative action in higher education admission based on race, leading to the Supreme Court's decision. I did this 
while raising a mixed race family in the South. My kids were threatened. My wife was subjected to many racial epithets. Their car tires were slashed. My kid's dog was shot. There was little investigation. Those responsible were never found. That was then, that was the South. It was hard for my wife, it was hard for my kids. But this is Syracuse. This is 2019, I do. He took his baggage with him. Right? That's what that is. He, he's, he's a guy who suffered from, you know, you know, unacceptable behavior, wherever the hell he was from, whatever he did to attract it or whatever happened, right? And whatever happened, doesn't, it's, not, it's not today, right? And he's still dealing with the emotional turmoil of being in a ra racially mixed marriage, as he said, and, and he's bringing that business with him to school, to his job. And that's how he reacted, right? He saw, he sees racism wherever he it turns. He looks this way, he sees racism. He sees a Trump hat. He's racist. Look, he's racist. Uh, it's fucking crazy, man. This shit is, is just, I mean, it just shows the hypersensitivity of, the, uh, of the, the character. I think that that's what I wanted to talk about. So, oh, you know what? Let me, before we do that, I want to, I'll jump into the next story in a second. But look at this shit. I got this shit in the mail, man. You're going to love this, man. Bernie Sanders sent me a letter. Bernie, there he is, right? Bernie, Bernie from, from Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, sent me a letter, right? And um, so I got my, I got the shit in the mail yesterday, man. This is dope, man. Shit quickly, right? So fucking it's stickers, right? I collect stickers, man. I get stickers all over the place, right? They sent me a uh, Not Me Us sticker. I didn't pay for it. I didn't send anything. All I did was I got the email. I said, you want a sticker? I said, yeah, I'll take a sticker. Why not, man? So I got that sticker, right? That was pretty cool, man. I got this stuff. And I got a big I got a big bumper sticker. I don't have a car, but I got a bumper sticker, man. Right? Hey, this is good, man. These are collector's items, man. You know why? Because because after Bernie Sanders becomes president, you know that shit that shit right there is gonna sell on eBay for fucking like 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 forty bucks, twenty bucks, thirty bucks, man. It's an investment, man. I'm not fucking stupid. I'm not stupid. Ah, and a and a and a and a letter. A letter. A letter, 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 letter from Bernie Sanders. Oh my God, he made my day, man. I, this is what I live for, man. Fucking Bernie Sanders, man. Bernie fucking Sanders. Man. So, so anyway, that was show and tell. Uh, so let's look. So what else do we have? What else do we have? So this banker shit, right? Check this shit out, man. So one bank was just accused of violating money laundering laws, twenty three million times. Wow. Can you imagine if you, I mean, you smoke pot twice, you get, you go to three times, you're out, right? Three times, you're out. You remember the three strikes, you're out shit, right? Fucking, that's for regular people. Bankers, 23 million times, you're still not out. So, Australia's once squeaky clean banking industry has lost its good reputation. And now the country's second largest bank, Westpac, has broken anti-terror and AML laws requiring the bank to closely screen transactions with an international component. Hmm. All told, all told, the bank said it was documented, it has documented no fewer than 23 million transactions that didn't receive an adequate level of scrutiny. This includes failing to report 7.5 billion in interna uh. international travels, excuse me. Uh, it's, it's crazy, man. It's just, when you read something like this, you say to yourself, if that was me, if that was the guy next door, if that was the guy down the block, jail, right? But, but banks can rip us off for $7.5 billion, and there's no consequence, right? No consequence, right? Fucking, you know, it's, it's crazy shit, man, you know? And, like, I was just thinking to myself when I was looking at Bernie, right? When you go to a Bernie rally, right, you see the people, right? Well, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that story in a second. So, because Bernie, Bernie people know this stuff, right? It, it's the Trump people that you have a hard time explaining it to, right? When you go to Bernie rallies, right? And fucking the Trump people are, are come there to antagonize, right? You see that shit all the time. But you know what? The Bernie people go over and give the, the Trump people a hug right? and tell them, say, hey, you know what? By the way, you know who's the, who's the bad guy? It's the fucking banks ripping you off, man. And they're like, I know, fucking Trump, Trump, bad Trump, fucking... Make America great again. <laughs> Those are funny rallies, by the way, man. 
fucking Bernie rally. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's see, man. So, so yeah, so the banks, fucking, come on, man. I'm tired of getting ripped off by these goddamn banks, right? Lock them up, man. This is who you lock up. So let's talk about Obama. Obama. Obama warns against purity tests, urges Democrats to chill the fuck out. Really? <laughs> uh, you know what? This is what I'm telling you, man. Like, this, this story encapsulates the other two, right? Obama is sitting, is, is um, at a, he's at a fundraiser talking to very wealthy donors. Right? He's looking out into the wealthy donor crowd and saying, saying that the Democrats need to chill out because, because right? He's trying, he's trying to say that the, the hypersensitive left is off the rails, right? right? And he's telling the bankers that, right? Or he's telling the progressives. I don't know what he's saying. Try to help me figure it out because I really don't know what the hell I'm talking about today. I'm just, I'm just fucking fishing right here. I'm on a fishing expedition. I know what I'm talking about. So uh, Los Alamos, uh, California. Former Barack Obama president warned Democrats on Thursday uh, against adopting a purity test in the presidential primary and said an adversary, an ad- adversity, <laughs> said that any adversity the candidates face in the contest will, will make Whoever emerges an even stronger nomination. So this is this is Obama coming into a a wealthy, you know, fundraiser and he's sandbagging the Democrats, right? He's saying, Don't worry about it, don't worry, let them fight it out. We got this shit under control, man. Right? He's the president of the United States. Blacks worship Obama. It's like that's fucking Obama Jesus. Right? That's black Jesus. Right? Literally. i I I mean, really, by right? fucking blacks. Love Obama, most of them. Uh, so anything Obama says sticks, right, to a, to, a, to a group of people that voted on the base of race. Now, is that, am I playing them small? Am I playing them shallow? Uh, no, I think you can, I think if you, if you look at black support for Obama, it was upwards of 80, 90 percent. Uh, you can't say that about Trump because he's white, or you can't say that about Bernie because he's white. But you can't say that about, about Barack Obama. And you probably could say that about uh, uh, the first woman president, if it should happen. Right? I mean, most Hillary Clinton supporters, 85 90% were voting for her because she was a woman. So Obama has massive uh, back support. Obama spoke to about 100 donors during a question and answer session with Democratic National Committee Chairman Tom Perez. Tom, pay for play Tom. Right, and um, he tried to he tried to uh, water down the people. Until recently, Obama largely refrained from open uh, opinioning publicly on Democratic contests. Let's listen to what he said. Right, fuck all this reading shit. Quote: We will not win just by increasing the turnout of the people who already agree with us completely on everything. Obama said, which is why I am always suspicious of purity tests during elections. What the fuck is a purity test? What is, what is he talking about? Purity test. Purity test. Because we got to look at it. Because Obama, this is when Obama speaks to blacks. Listen, right? What is it? What is it? Can a guy, gynecologist tell if you're a virgin? No, that's not it. Right? What is a purity test? Purity rice test? Purity test? Come on, give me it, man. Come on, you're making me look silly here. A purity test is a self-graded survey that assesses the participants' supposed degree of innocence in the world's matter. Hmm. So he's saying, don't be pure, call out the corruption? Great. Hillary Clinton's a criminal, throw her in fucking jail. Uh, is that what you're saying? No. He's saying, he's saying um, Joe Biden. Uh, he's probably paving the way for Joe Biden to say, oh, see, Joe Biden, don't look at the purity test. Be innocent. Is that what he's saying? Or don't be innocent? I don't fucking know. We will not win just by increasing the turnout of people who already agree with us uh, uh, completely on everything, Obama said, which is why I am always suspicious of purity tests during elections. It's fucking, it's, it's, look, we have a... I, I'm done reading this shit, right? One more time. One more, one more quote. We have a number of women candidates, and we have one gay candidate, and those candidates are going to have to be- have barriers if they win the nomination or they win the general election, just like I did. 
Obama told the donors. You can overcome that, you can overcome that resistance uh, if the way you are framing these issues, he, he's saying absolutely nothing. Look, we're, we're living in a time of snowflakes, of bank fraud, of, you know, just, you know, confusion, uh, uh, race, everybody jumping at race, racial, racial divide, racial, oh, he called me a black, he called me a white, he called me a Hispanic, he called me a Chinese, he called, you know, come on, everybody just relax, right, fucking, just send Bernie some, just send Bernie a dollar and you'll get a fucking free sticker and you'll be happy like me, so, uh, so Marcus County reporting, I'm just going to, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to make of that Obama thing, but I think he should shut his hole. Uh, shut your mouth, go back into the, wherever you were from, wherever you were, go back to the golf course, spend your money, you're a fucking phony, you, you know, 2008, everybody had, had faith in you, and, and you turn your back on everybody, Occupy Wall Street, 2011, you threw those kids under the bus, fuck you, Obama, fuck you. Fuck you, Obama. As long as we got the remote.